All right, this one is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, we just finished nationals, as you can see. Victoria uh, come out with the, uh, the chockies. So in this one, I'll probably just give you a bit of a rundown on what happened at nationals and uh, how the setup was. Um, pretty much, first of all, I'd like to just thank the, uh, all the subscribers out there that have helped this uh, channel uh, get underway. Um, and again, if you haven't subscribed, it does help the channel if you wanna just push that button um, and help me. Um, also help you guys as well. So I knew how hard it was when I first started playing pool um, just to get help basically. And uh, you know, I, I did find a few people and uh, they were able to help me, but at least by doing these videos and putting it out there uh, and you guys sharing them, um, well, I can help pretty much everyone from juniors to middle age to old age to whoever. So yeah, so it all started meeting up with uh, Mark and Gussie. Gussie came to my house, pretty excited. We had a bit of a, bit of a hit in the morning while we waited for Mark and then headed to Mark's place at about 12. And uh, we jumped in the car and made the uh, massive journey, the four hour long journey up to uh, Albury. And um, Gussie likes to have his little naps in the back of the car like a little baby, and he did that. <laughs> um, we, when we arrived there, we basically just checked in and um, we were able to actually have a bit of a hit. The setup at the club was absolutely unreal. Uh, Albury, we've had nationals at Albury now for, for a very long time. That, that's how it feels anyway. The club is absolutely amazing. The venue the venue's amazing. Um, obviously, there's not much to do in Albury, so it'd be nice if it was in other states. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, Albury is absolutely amazing uh, venue to have nationals or worlds. Um, Trav and Mel, absolutely brilliant, and Mark as well. Um, everything they did behind the scenes to getting messages on your phone to the apps, like the, the setup that you'll see now is uh, is absolutely brilliant. The way they, they set the lights up and Cubal TV, Dan, Dan Lynch um, was there every day. He spent, I don't know how many hours every day there, 12 plus hours getting everything done. Uh, Gary Bradshaw uh, doing the photography there. Um, he caught all the all the moments throughout the, uh, the whole 10, 11 days while we we're up there. Uh, it was absolutely an amazing setup. So thanks Trav, thanks Mel. For um for just putting on a, a great nationals as as you have been doing so um, eight balls in good hands with you guys so well done so obviously when we when we got there the next day we had a bit of a hit that night and the next day was opening ceremony and the opening ceremony is always you know it's a bit of a, a long long day yeah you sort of all gather in a bit of a group we do the opening ceremony the breaking of the balls. <laughs> actually had to wait around a little bit to do the individual photos and uh, it does uh, it is a little bit boring for uh, for a lot of us but um, at the end of the day you create some good memories and good photos and uh, basically if it, if it went pretty quick which they never do uh, it wouldn't be so boring but at the end of the day um, yeah there were some amazing photos that got done I, um, I captured a, a photo which I'll put up now of uh, Toby Clack and Paul Clack playing against each other. And uh, Paul actually won that match, I think it was 5-4. I think it was, it was Hill Hill. It was either 4-3 or 5-4, one or the other. And Paul actually coming away with the chocolates there. I thought it was a great moment just to see a father and son battle it out. I've seen, obviously, Toby grow up over the years um, and he's going to be one of Victoria's greats, um, along with Sean Dempsey as well. We've got some great talent uh, coming up in Victoria and obviously the other states as well have got some great talent also and it's good to see. Also um, we this year we had uh, Kira, I'm not going to say her last name because it's just it's just too hard and uh, she did an amazing job giving us lollies and fruit, uh, keeping the team organised, updated with the messages every night. She let us know the schedules even though we had the schedules. Um, she did absolutely an amazing job. Um, one, one of the, the best team managers I think Victoria um, could have, at, especially at this time. So 
Uh, well done, Kira. Thank you so much. Every year that I've played anyway, um, there's always, look, no matter what team you're in and who you play for, there's always emotions and stuff that, that go on in everyone's heads, you know, whether they're doing good or bad. Um, I remember after my quarter finals match against uh, Alex Kingsbury, uh, I played, I didn't play great. Um, and I don't think he played great as well. And we just, I just happened to get over the line there. And uh, I came away after that match feeling very emotional. Like it's already been, you know, several days away from the wife and kids and it all just hit me. Um, and I went out the back and actually just, um, just needed some time to myself. And I started recording a little video, uh, which I'll, I'll put on in a sec. I started recording a little video just explaining maybe why I'm so emotional. Um, every year that goes by, probably every second year, I'm all, like I'm always in tears one way or another, whether it's pool or whether it's, you know, dramas on the table or off the table or whatever. There's just the, the roller coaster of emotions that go through your head as a player, um, especially this year, being, being co-captain with Paul Clark. Um, you know, we had 10 as well, so we were trying to sub two people and... Our team was just absolutely amazing, and it was just—it was very hard to do, especially um, with the side that we had. So, I'll run you that clip now of um, me just—I'm I'm not sure—basically just letting some uh, letting some words out, and I didn't know whether I was going to put this in the video or not, but here it is. Finished my semi uh, quarters match. Wasn't great. Got over the line against Alex Kingsbury. Um, just miss my family. It's been a long time up here. His emotions are running wild right now. Got Barney Boy in the semis now. Not in about half an hour, so. It's amazing the uh, the roller coaster ride we put ourselves on. Sometimes you just gotta let let it out. Anyway, not sure why I'm saying this, but because it's all part of the journey. So you can see there, uh, yeah, I was pretty, uh, I was I was I was upset. I just in a way. The, the way I was playing. Um, I've, look, this is my, I think, 13th Nationals as well. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long journey um, also to actually head over there, try and make the, the Victorian side, then to go away. And to, like most of us were trying to actually make the state side because Worlds were meant to be in Albury next year. And a lot of us wanted to go away make the Australian side and then play play Wells next year. But we found out that Albury, um, the Worlds in Albury were now cancelled. All the all the other countries didn't want to come down to Albury, uh, which or Australia pretty much. I found that a little bit a little bit unfair because we're always we're always sending players overseas every year. And the one time that I think they could have travelled down just one year. Um, would have been great, but unfortunately it's been cancelled. So um, yeah, there's no no worlds in Aubrey next year, which which is a shame. I think this year too. I think this year too was a little bit special as well. Um, playing with you know obviously Robbo, Noonan, McCartney. You got all these guys that are coming that have come in and out of the state team over the years, and for everyone to actually be sort of combined into one team again and for us to all play together was actually quite special this year. And uh, I'm not sure now with everyone sort of getting getting older and maybe going going separate ways, I'm not sure if um, a slide like that may be put together again, which um, could be a shame, but at the end of the day, we've got we've got other players coming up that are, that are absolutely killing it. So uh, Victoria, I think, is in, in good hands for um, a few more Australian titles in the future. All right, here's a little clip actually of um, Gussie scare and Mark. Mark was brushing his teeth and uh, Gussie decided to give a little, little bit of a scare and uh, Mark actually nearly stabbed himself in the eye with his, uh, with his toothbrush 
as you'll see. <laughs> Man, that was that was so funny, so funny. I think that was like two in the morning. I think uh, Rob Bowen and uh, Rob Bowen next door, uh, he actually heard it as well. I think we woke him up. So sorry, Rob. Um, Bella going back to back this year, absolutely amazing. She's got all the talent in the world um, alongside her brother as well, Gus. Tell me how excited you are, Gus. Oh, very. I can't take a shy now. Tell me, I, no, I, am. I, I never thought this moment would come again, and just to be with all of you guys, it really is just amazing. <laughs> Bowen, I, I'm absolutely pumped as well. I mean, I've, I've, I've just been dreaming of playing with Gussie all these years. It's, you know, yeah. Uh, which I think um, Gus basically definitely played. I think some of the best pool out of our side this year. Um, and possibly in the room as well. Um, Gus, Gus is just very steady and, uh, yeah, brilliant player and is going to go on to absolutely destroy it over the next several years um, playing for Victoria and making Australian sides and all that. So good luck, Gussie. Um, but Bella was, uh, was always going to, I think, uh, do extremely well when, when she obviously learnt to, uh, in a way, get some more... Toughness about her, mental strength, a bit, bit more ego, let it out a little bit more. Um, and I think now that she went on to win her second uh, second Australian title, back to back. First, I'm pretty sure it's the first female that's done it. Um, so now, now Bella and I actually hold the, uh, the first to go back to back with the Australian uh, with the Australian singles. I did it in 2014 and 15, and made the final in 2016 and lost to uh, to Ben Foster in the final 10-7, we were seven all, and then he ran away with it. So that could have been three in a row for me, but look, I was I was happy to get one, and I was able to make three finals and, and get two out of it. So uh, I can't I can't complain there. And uh, this year, I was actually uh, I lost to Barney Boy nine eight in the, in the semis. So I could have made a, a fourth final this year. I didn't play great. I was six two down, and um, I managed to just claw my way back. Uh, I don't think I was playing well, but Again, when I talk about your B game and your A game, you know, if your A game's up here and your B game's down here, you want to get your B game as good as you can to your A game. That way, when you're having a bad day, a bad week, your B game can actually hold you in good stead. And it sort of did, and I was able to um, get a great chance, breaking at, nine, uh, breaking at eight all, and uh, they just landed absolutely fat. And uh, I went to roll my second last ball in. Didn't make the pocket. I... Didn't land nicely on it, but um, they were that easy, and I maybe took it a little bit too easy, but um, didn't reach the pocket. I fouled, and Barney Boy mopped them up and, made, and moved him into the final to play uh, Stone. Yeah, what a match that was. Uh, Stone actually having a chance to win the match a bit earlier, uh, Mr. Black, and then um, Barney had his chance to actually uh, win the Australian title as well, which he had a... A bit of a, a, a tough black, um, just jawed it, and Stone Stone mopped up and uh, won 10, 10 9. So, congratulations, Stone. Uh, well deserved. Uh, you looked great actually playing out there as well. Um, yeah, it's good to see some new blood out there. And Barney, I know, I know it hurts. Trust me, it hurts. But um, you're going to be knocking like like I said, keep knocking on those doors, and eventually one will open. So, yeah, congratulations. Again to Stone and uh, Barney for making the final. Um, also, Bella and Colby. Um, that was another interesting sort of ending to that one. Uh, Colby had a chance, um, possibly a, a routine black, I would say, um, and, and missed it. And then Bella was able to knock in the black and, and take that match to, to win back to back. So, again, well done, uh, Bella, and un unlucky Colby there. Um, Colby still tr obviously trying to win her first one. Um, and again, just keep knocking on those doors, keep keep fighting, keep battling away, and it will happen. It will happen one day. So uh, the plate, Luke, Anglesey versus Robbo. Luke 
one of the nicest guys in the room you'll ever meet. Absolutely, uh, he's always got a great smile. Um, yeah, he uh, played Robbo in the final of the plate and just possibly didn't give Mark, he gave Mark chances, but at the end of the day, uh, Luke took a lot of his chances. Mark didn't take as many of the chances that he should have. Um, and Luke pretty much, in a way, just outplayed, outplayed Mark. I think probably wanted it more. Um, and uh, yeah, he ran away with it and won, won the plate. So that was uh, an absolutely awesome effort there by Luke. So again, well done, Luke. And Lindell versus Colby also in the plate. That was um, that Lindell Vine. She, uh, she got Colby in the, in the final of the plate there too. So uh, well done, Lindell. And also with the doubles, uh, Wayne Stubbs and Justin Stubbs, his son, took out the, uh, the doubles, which is absolutely amazing. Um, to have a father and son, that's uh, a special moment there. So congratulations, boys. That was... Um, uh, that was a good a good watch and good good to see that too. So I had a bit of a chat one night with uh, with Justin. Haven't really spoken to him much over the years. Um, it's just hard to obviously chat to a lot of people, especially when you're over there competing and playing a lot of stuff, and then you're having your downtime. But spent probably a good hour one night uh, with with Justin, having a bit of a chat to him, and one of the nicest blokes you'll ever meet too. So yeah, that was good. Um. The six red, the six red. Uh, I actually, I got knocked out sort of around about the last 20 stage. I, uh, I, made, I made the cut, but I went and played one of my, one of my shots and didn't hit a rail and didn't even, I didn't even notice. And then I got like a 22 second time to actually move, move forward into the next round. And they said, oh, your second last ball, you didn't hit, hit a rail. Because I was just setting the white ball up, but I didn't even realize that. So that was a five second penalty and that put me out. So uh, Craig Stevens actually went on to win the six red. We saw him, Mark actually uh, said, uh, he's got, Craig's actually got probably the best break with the six red in the room. And I was watching Craig break the balls and practicing it, practicing it. And uh, when they opened up, he was always going to shoot, you know, 20 seconds, 18 seconds. And uh, he was definitely the man to beat. I don't know if anyone knew that, but these are little things you pick up around the room when you're uh, when you're waiting and watching and you're competing you can you can look around the room and see see who's there to win and Craig was definitely there to win and uh, he was he was favorite by a mile to, to win that to win that um, six red shootout and he did so congratulations uh, SpongeBob Craig Stevens uh, also uh, Ramona taking out the six red in the ladies and hammer taking the six red out in his division also. Um, great effort by everyone there. Uh, six red is uh, it's always good fun. So well done. Now for the teams event, um, I'll just start off with the Victorian ladies. Absolute destroyed their opponents. Thirteen uh, one, I think it was. Um, man, like I'm not sure if uh, there's been that big a deficit in a final. Uh, ever in the history of um, in eight ball, so well done to the women's ladies uh, doing uh, Victoria proud and um, winning the Australian championships. So well done there. For us, uh, we played SA and pretty much um, we hadn't beaten them in the last four or five attempts. So SA won. It. SA won it last year. And we've played them a few times already throughout the round robin, and uh, we lost to them, and also drew uh, drew against them as well. Um, couldn't seem to get over the line with them. They were just outplayed us pretty much, and uh, we knew that we had to play better pool. And obviously, if we wanted to win, um, we had to play better pool. And in the final, they uh, did get a bit of a jump on us again. Um, and it looked, it looked pretty dodgy at the start. And then eventually uh, there was a few chances that um, a few of the guys had that uh, the SA boys actually let slip and we were able to capitalize and we were able to jump the gun a little bit. Um, and yeah, I think, I'm not sure if it was a little bit of pressure in the final, obviously when you're beating someone and you haven't lost in almost two years, there can be that pressure 
or that added pressure coming coming into the finals, knowing the fact that you haven't lost in a very long time. And uh, I I like the fact that we hadn't sort of beaten them in a while, and I think it made it made us team team Victoria sort of fire up and want it um, just that little bit more. Uh, I think the pressure was more on SA than us in that grand final. Um, and yeah, there was some good pool played, there was some bad pool played. I probably missed one of the easiest blacks um, I've ever had in, in the 20 years that I've been playing. Um, I don't know, just I got down on it. Um, I just, I thought about my family back at home watching me play and I just sort of just took my eyes off the pot and I missed it. And that was for, that was to go 15-9 up. So it was really important, 15-9 up. And I ended up missing it, losing that frame. And all of a sudden now it's 10-14. And we're, we, then we had a break for a few minutes coming into the, the, final, the final quarter. And I thought I'd pretty much lost it for us at that time. That's what was going through my head, um, as, as we all do when we make mistakes. Um, and yeah, if I thought if we end up losing the first two in the, in the last round, and then it's 14-12, all of a sudden, I, I don't know if we can win. I just honestly just thought, wow, I think I've just cost us the title. But we, were, we uh, managed to uh, win the next two and uh, go on to win the Australian title. Rob Bowen actually knocked in the, the winning black and uh, didn't actually realise it until we all started running out and jumping on him. So... Um, yeah, to, to beat SA after two years of them just basically destroying everybody, uh, it was a great feeling. Uh, WA could have definitely won it this year as well, and New South Wales are always, always in contention as well. So, But um, WA was definitely had, had a, one of the strongest sides I've seen in a while as well, and um, we actually played probably one of the, the best games of the tournament against them um, to make the grand final. So... I reckon that that match against WA uh, that we played against them was was better than than what we played in the final. But uh, yeah, we got the chocolates. Here it is, and um, yeah, couldn't be couldn't be happier. And uh, wrapping it up, look, the uh, the presentation night was was again an awesome setup. It was a great room, great setup. And it did actually go for a long time because there's a lot of there's a lot of trophies to give out. Um, it actually went for around seven hours, which was uh, in a way pretty brutal. Um, I think in future maybe they could possibly try and start it on the on the Saturday around about twelve o'clock maybe, and maybe have lunch and then wrap up about five, and then people can actually you know finish up and go home or do whatever they need to do. But starting at around six seven o'clock and then finish, finishing at one in the morning. Um, was uh, I think pretty crazy but at the end of the day you live and you learn and uh, without making mistakes we can't learn from them so um, yeah great great job even the, the setup in that room looked amazing the, the, the trophies in the back room looked amazing um, the whole thing was just done was done brilliant brilliantly so I think in the future it would be nice to have a nationals that lasts maybe a week yeah I think they can they can shorten it down to about seven days would be would be a lot better just because people got family work and all that stuff i know you know me running my own business i lost you know lost two weeks of work and it does all that up so um you know it'd be nice nice if they can cram it down a little bit a little bit more to you know a good week and maybe two weekends or something like that but at the end of the day they're doing a great job and uh with all the six red shootouts and the the plates and the you know the, the teams event, the singles, the masters, the women's, the just the open. It's just there's so much pool going on, which is actually a good thing. You know, you can go there and you can actually play a lot of pool. And if you're still in everything, you're going to be playing pool every day and you know ten hours a day, which is good. It's tiring, but you keep winning. You play a lot of pool. So, um, and all those guys that made the Australian side, uh, well done, um, Luke Foster for being captain of the Australian side and uh, Jaden Domenka for being vice captain. So uh, I snuck in at, I think it was sixth spot. And uh, yeah, everyone else that, that made, made the Australian side and everyone else that made, uh, you know, this all happen again, again, thanks Trav, thanks Mel. And uh, again, Cubal TV, Dan Lynch, um, thank you to making uh, a great nationals, um, a very special, 
nationals actually. So um, again, yep, thanks. I just wanted to do something like this and uh, give you a bit of a rundown about nationals. It wasn't perfect, but I couldn't take m much videos at all um, because obviously we're playing all the time and had a team to team to run. So hope hope this gave you a little bit of an insight on uh, on on the nationals. And uh, as always, I will see you guys on the next one. Cheers.